As city life grew increasingly chaotic for Joanna, the allure of a weekend getaway grew stronger. With a few swipes on her Airbnb app, she found herself gazing at a listing that seemed too good to be true. Nestled in the tranquil town of Silverbrook was an impressive mansion with intricate Gothic architecture, sitting amid sprawling gardens adorned with ancient oak trees. The photographs showcased expansive rooms adorned with chandeliers, grand fireplaces, and antique furniture that transported viewers to another era. What was even more astonishing was the ridiculously low price for such luxury. Joanna chuckled, thinking maybe the hosts had made a pricing mistake, but the calendar showed it was consistently booked for months, with just the upcoming weekend mysteriously available. Curiosity peaked, Joanna skimmed through the reviews. They were overwhelmingly positive. Guests gushed over the mansion's charm and the hospitality of the hosts, a seemingly pleasant couple named Martin and Claire. Only a few reviews vaguely mentioned an unusual atmosphere, but were quickly overshadowed by the following positive ones. Trusting her instinct and lured by the idea of a lavish stay at a bargain, Joanna instantly booked her weekend escape, eagerly looking forward to her luxurious retreat. However, what awaited her in Silverbrook was something she hadn't bargained for. Joanna's journey to Silverbrook was scenic, to say the least. Tree-lined roads, picturesque meadows, and the distant hum of a gentle river provided a serenity she had longed for. The sun was beginning to dip below the horizon when she finally arrived at the mansion's imposing iron gates. They slowly creaked open as she approached, revealing a long cobblestone driveway. The mansion was even more magnificent in person. Tendrils of ivy clung to its stone walls, and the last rays of sunlight made its windows shimmer. But there was an uncanny silence, a stillness that hung in the air. As Joanna parked her car, the front door opened. A tall man with unkempt hair and piercing blue eyes stood there. He wore a suit, but it looked slightly ill-fitted and outdated as if from a different era. You must be Joanna, he said, his voice smooth but with an underlying tremor. I'm Martin. Claire will join us shortly. She nodded, trying to brush off an uneasy feeling. The place is breathtaking, Joanna remarked, attempting to break the tension. Martin smiled, revealing slightly yellowed teeth. It's been in the family for generations. We've only recently decided to share its beauty with others. As they walked inside, Joanna noticed the mansion's grandeur was tainted with subtle signs of neglect. Dust settled on some furniture and a few paintings were askew. It was as if the house was dressed up in a hurry, giving the impression of opulence, but the details gave away its true state. Suddenly a soft voice echoed from the staircase. Ah, our guest has arrived. Claire, a petite woman with wild curls cascading down her back, gracefully descended the stairs. Her pale skin contrasted sharply with her deep red lips and the vintage black dress she wore. We're so glad you could make it, Joanna, Claire cooed, her voice melodic but with an odd, distant undertone. The evening proceeded with dinner served in the grand dining hall. The food was exquisite, but Joanna couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, even when the host's eyes weren't directly on her. Whispers echoed through the mansion's vast corridors, and every creak of the old wooden floor seemed amplified. Retiring to her room that night, Joanna found a note on her bedside table. It read, We hope you enjoy your stay. Do not wander the mansion after midnight. Trying to convince herself it was just a quirk of staying in an old house with protective hosts, Joanna tucked herself into bed, unaware of the web she was entangled in. Joanna woke up to a crisp morning, the sun's rays sneaking through the gaps in the heavy drapes. Deciding to explore the mansion and its grounds, she set off after breakfast, equipped with her camera to capture the stunning architecture and landscapes. The garden was a maze of beautifully sculpted hedges, fountains that had long stopped spurting water, and stone statues that seemed to be watching every passerby with a grimace. As she ventured deeper, she came across a small, dilapidated greenhouse. Curiosity getting the better of her, she pushed open the creaky door. Inside, amidst the overgrown plants and dried leaves, Joanna spotted something odd. A stack of recent newspapers, all with the same headline. Two patients escape Silverbrook Mental Institute. Feeling her pulse quicken, she skimmed the article. The escapees were described as highly intelligent but deeply disturbed. The article also warned locals to report any suspicious activity as the duo was believed to be dangerous. Trying to calm her racing heart and rationalize her fears, Joanna reminded herself that Silverbrook was a large town. The mansion was merely one of the many places the escapees could have sought refuge. Maybe the hosts were just trying to keep informed about potential threats. 
As she made her way back to the mansion, a small wooden shed caught her eye. The door was slightly ajar, and peeking inside, she discovered a scene that sent chills down her spine. Personal belongings, wallets, IDs, car keys, and a few scattered photographs of the mansion's previous Airbnb guests. Her eyes darted to one particular photo. It was of an older couple, smiling broadly, with the mansion in the background. A handwritten note at the back read, Martin and Clara, owners of Silverbrook Mansion. Panic welled up as the reality began to dawn on Joanna. The kind hosts, Martin and Claire, were imposters, and the real owners, the older couple in the photo, were nowhere to be seen. Hearing footsteps approaching, Joanna quickly shut the shed door and hid behind a large oak tree. She watched as Claire entered the shed, emerging a few minutes later with a tray of tools that gleamed ominously in the sunlight. Joanna knew she had to act fast. She needed to find a way out of the mansion and alert the authorities, all while ensuring she didn't arouse the suspicions of the faux hosts who had seamlessly woven a web of deception around their unsuspecting guest. Joanna, drawing from all the detective shows she had watched, decided to make a ruse. She approached the main house, feigning a cheerful demeanor. Claire, I was thinking of taking a little walk into town, you know, to get a sense of the local culture. Claire eyed her suspiciously. Oh, it's quite a long walk, dear, and the roads can be confusing. Wouldn't want you getting lost now, would we? Oh, don't worry, I've always had a good sense of direction, Joanna replied, trying to keep her voice steady. All right, dear, just make sure you're back before dark. The woods aren't too kind after sunset, Claire said with a cryptic smile. Making her way into town, Joanna soon realized that this place seemed trapped in time. The buildings were old and the people seemed to be living a life reminiscent of decades gone by. She headed to a quaint diner, hoping to find someone willing to talk about the property she was staying at. Over a cup of coffee, she struck up a conversation with an elderly man named Henry, who seemed to have lived in the town his entire life. Oh, the mansion up on Harrow Hill, he said, a shadow crossing his face when she mentioned it. You're staying there? Joanna nodded and explained her strange experiences, leaving out the part about discovering the real Martin and Claire. Henry's face turned a shade paler. You need to leave that place, he said in a low voice. There have been rumors. Two individuals, a man and a woman, broke out of a nearby mental institution about a year ago. They were never caught. Joanna felt her stomach drop. Do you think they could be the ones posing as my hosts? Henry hesitated for a moment before replying. All I know is that the real Martin and Claire haven't been seen in town for almost the same amount of time. Joanna's mind raced. She needed to get out and inform the authorities immediately. But she also realized she had left all her belongings back at the mansion. I need to go back there, at least to retrieve my phone. Can you help me? Henry looked hesitant but finally agreed. All right, but we'll need to be careful. Together, the duo hatched a plan to retrieve Joanna's belongings and hopefully uncover the truth about the imposters she'd unknowingly been sharing a home with. Darkness was beginning to fall as Joanna and Henry approached the mansion. Henry had insisted they wait until the early hours of the evening, assuming the imposters would be less alert. He had also enlisted the help of a couple of robust local lads, Tom and Lucas, to ensure they had the numbers on their side. I remember there being a side entrance through the kitchen whispered Joanna. It's less creaky and less noticeable than the main entrance. The quartet moved stealthily, with Tom and Lucas taking the lead. The mansion loomed large against the twilight sky, its windows dark save for a faint glow from the living room. Lucas, a burly figure with nimble hands, managed to pick the lock of the side door within minutes. They stepped into the dimly lit kitchen. Joanna quickly signaled the way to her room where her belongings and most importantly, her phone were. As they climbed the staircase, they heard the muffled sounds of a conversation. Henry gestured for everyone to halt. Through a slightly ajar door, they could make out Martin and Claire, deeply engrossed in a discussion, with stacks of money and some documents spread out on a table before them. Realizing the opportunity, Joanna motioned for Tom to discreetly record their conversation. They soon discovered that the faux hosts had not only taken over the mansion, but had been swindling money, probably from other unsuspecting guests. The documents appeared to be fake property deeds and other fraudulent materials. Joanna felt a rush of anger, but knew this wasn't the time for confrontations. She gestured for the group to move on. They quickly retrieved her belongings, including her phone, from her room. Just as they were about to leave, a floorboard creaked loudly under Lucas's foot. The muffled voices from the room ceased immediately. 
Did you hear that? Came Claire's sharp voice. Panic surged through the group. Henry motioned for them to split up. He and Joanna would go downstairs while Tom and Lucas would find an alternate exit. Joanna could hear rapid footsteps approaching as she and Henry made their way to the kitchen. They barely had time to hide behind the large wooden dining table when Martin entered the room, looking around suspiciously. A tense moment passed with Joanna's heart pounding loudly in her ears. Then with a deep sigh, Martin exited the room, giving them a narrow window to make their escape. As Joanna and Henry moved swiftly away from the mansion, a sudden and deafening gunshot pierced the night air. The group froze momentarily startled. Another gunshot rang out, echoing eerily in the still night. Frantically, they tried to locate the source, only to witness a horrifying sight. Tom and Lucas lay lifeless on the ground, their bodies being dragged back toward the mansion by Claire and a shadowy figure that wasn't Martin, but a larger, even more menacing presence. Chaos ensued. Henry grabbed Joanna's arm, urging her to run as fast as she could while he tried to distract the assailants. The dim moonlight was their only guide as they darted between trees and overgrown shrubs, desperate to put as much distance as possible between them and their pursuers. The chilling sound of laughter echoed behind them, intertwined with the sinister promise of Claire's voice. You can't escape us. Just as hope seemed to be slipping away, a sharp pain shot through Joanna's leg. She'd been hit, clenching her teeth against the pain. She tried to keep running, her vision blurring from tears and terror. Henry, realizing what happened, hoisted Joanna onto his shoulder, pushing forward with every ounce of strength. The town, he panted. We're almost there. Joanna's consciousness began to wane. The last thing she remembered before darkness took over was the distant sounds of sirens and a reassuring squeeze from Henry's hand. Joanna woke up in a sterile hospital room, greeted by the concerned faces of local law enforcement and medics. The police had been alerted by the sounds of the gunshots, and a search party had been dispatched to the mansion. Upon entering the mansion's cold, damp basement, they found the gruesomely decomposed bodies of the real Martin and Claire, shackled to the walls with clear signs of prolonged torture. It appeared they had been dead for weeks, perhaps even months. The room was filled with a sickeningly sweet stench, the walls stained with dark, dried streaks that spoke of unspeakable horrors. The whole town was in shock. Whispers about the mansion's dark history were now overshadowed by this real, tangible nightmare that had unfolded within its walls. As the news spread, locals pieced together the events of the last few months, realizing that the imposters had seamlessly taken over the lives of the real Martin and Claire, skillfully evading suspicion. For Joanna, the physical wounds would eventually heal, but the psychological scars were deep. Every night, she would be jolted awake by the haunting laughter of the imposters and the horrifying vision of the real host's remains. The once promising Airbnb trip had turned into a chilling tale of deception, murder, and terror. The full moon painted a silvery glow over the dense canopy of trees, the path leading to Hawthorne Hideaway barely visible. The occasional chirp of crickets was the only sound that greeted Ashley and Kyle as their car trundled down the gravel road. The cottage's online photos hadn't done justice to its rustic charm. Framed by twisted vines and wild roses, it was a perfect blend of seclusion and allure. Ashley's fingers danced over the wooden sign reading, Hawthorne Hideaway, as she breathed in the woodsy aroma. Feels like stepping back in time, Kyle remarked, pulling out their luggage. Ashley nodded in agreement, her gaze fixated on a dim light flickering from an upstairs window. Must be one of those automatic lights, she mused. They used the code provided to unlock the door. The inside was quaint, adorned with antiques and draped in soft ambient lighting. However, the most captivating feature was the stone fireplace, already crackling, making the room warm and inviting. After a quick meal, they decided to call it a night. Climbing into bed, they dismissed the odd sensation of being watched as nothing more than jitters from being in a new place. Just as they were about to drift off, a whisper floated from the hallway. Welcome back. Both exchanged a nervous glance, unsure if it was their imagination or if their stay was about to take an unexpected turn. Morning sunlight pierced through the gaps in the curtains. The soft chirping of birds signaled the start of a new day. Ashley, already up and about, brewed a pot of coffee while Kyle stumbled into the kitchen, rubbing his eyes. You heard that last night, right? She asked hesitantly, handing him a mug. He nodded, taking a sip. Yeah, probably just the house settling or maybe a nearby radio. Wanting to shake off their unease, they decided to explore the cottage. 
It wasn't long before Ashley stumbled upon an old dusty photo album nestled in the back of a wooden bookshelf. Wiping away the layer of grime, she opened it. Inside were black and white photographs of people who seemed to be from the early 1900s. There was a photo of a couple, the man sharply dressed, the woman in a flowing white gown, standing in front of the very cottage they were in. They looked strangely familiar. Flipping further, there was a group photo with the same couple surrounded by what seemed to be guests, all dressed in a similar bygone era fashion. But one photograph particularly caught Ashley's eye. It was a faded image of the cottage's living room. In the center, almost ghostly, were two figures eerily similar to Ashley and Kyle. Stunned, she called Kyle over. Look at this. His eyes widened as he took in the photograph. That, that can't be. The resemblance was uncanny. The same clothes they had worn last night, the same expressions, the same posture. On the back of the photograph, in delicate cursive, were the words, July 21st, 1922. Hawthorne Hideaway welcomes Ashley and Kyle. The realization dawned upon them. The whisper from the previous night, the familiarity of the place, and now this photograph. What's going on here, Ashley whispered, her voice trembling. Kyle gulped, trying to find a rational explanation. There's more to this place than we know. We need to find out. They were no longer just visitors at Hawthorne Hideaway. They were part of its intricate, mysterious tapestry. The once charming cottage now felt daunting in the dead of night. The weight of the old photographs pressed on their minds, causing Ashley and Kyle to jump at every creak and gust of wind. Ashley tried to lighten the mood, suggesting they watch a movie. As they curled up on the couch, a faint humming began. They muted the TV, trying to pinpoint the origin of the sound. It was a woman's voice, singing an old lullaby. The words were indiscernible, but the haunting melody echoed through the house. Suddenly the lights flickered and the TV screen turned to static. The singing grew louder and more persistent. Kyle grabbed a flashlight, determined to find the source. Stay here, he whispered to Ashley, but she wasn't about to be left alone. Together they moved cautiously through the cottage. The singing led them to the master bedroom. As they entered, the voice stopped abruptly. The room was cold, the air thick. In the dim light from the flashlight, they noticed the old mirror hanging on the wall, the same mirror from one of the photographs. This time, however, the reflection showed the room, but from a different time. Gas lamps illuminated the space and the old couple from the photograph was visible, dancing slowly. Kyle and Ashley watched in stunned silence. As the couple turned, they locked eyes with their modern-day observers, their expressions morphing from joy to anger. The reflection rippled like water before returning to their present-day bedroom. The night dragged on, punctuated by more mysterious happenings. Whispers echoed down the hall, footsteps on the wooden floor, doors opening and closing of their own accord. By the time dawn broke, Ashley and Kyle were huddled together on the living room couch, exhausted and scared. The charm of the old cottage had been replaced by a sense of foreboding. They knew they had to leave, but first, they needed answers. What connection did they have to this house and the couple in the old photographs? And more importantly, how could they break free from it? The first light of dawn brought a temporary relief from the eeriness of the night. But as the couple started packing up to leave, they realized some of their belongings were missing. Ashley searched for her cell phone. She remembered placing it on the kitchen counter last night, but now it was nowhere to be found. Kyle couldn't find his watch, a cherished gift from his grandfather. Are you sure you didn't misplace it? Ashley questioned, her voice reflecting a mix of frustration and fear. I've been wearing that watch every day for the past five years. I never misplace it, Kyle responded, lifting cushions and rummaging through their bags. Their search led them back to the room with the old mirror. On the dresser below it, they found a collection of items, old and new. Alongside coins from the 1800s and vintage hairpins was Ashley's cell phone and Kyle's watch. What baffled them more was an open photo album next to the pile. It was filled with photographs dating back decades. Every photo showed previous tenants of the cottage, always with two things in common. They all looked alarmed or disturbed, and they all had some of their belongings laid out in front of that same haunting mirror. The implication was chilling. Were these items taken as some form of memento, a keepsake for the spirits? The chilling thought crossed their minds. Would they soon become part of this eerie collection? Recalling the stories they heard about the cottage of tenants leaving in a rush, sometimes in the middle of the night, it all began to make sense. The previous occupants must have experienced similar incidents. As the weight of the situation pressed down on them, Kyle clenched Ashley's hand. We need to get out now. 
he whispered. But leaving wasn't going to be as straightforward as they thought. The spirits had plans of their own, and the couple's ordeal was far from over. With their missing items now found, Ashley and Kyle were in a rush to leave. As they dragged their bags towards the car, an old woman from the adjacent property waved them over. Curiosity outweighed their urgency. Stayed a night at the Brenner's place, did you? She asked with a hint of sympathy. She introduced herself as Mrs. Elsie Wren. We had a really unsettling night. There were strange noises, cold spots, and our stuff was moved, Ashley said, looking desperate for an explanation. Elsie invited them inside her cozy cottage, which stood in stark contrast to the Brenner place. She poured them tea and began recounting tales of the property next door. That cottage was built by a man named Jonathan Brenner in the late 1800s. He was madly in love with a woman, Lillian. They were set to marry, but she disappeared a night before their wedding. Shattered, Jonathan would sit by that mirror every night, placing Lillian's belongings around it, hoping she'd return. Elsie continued. Months turned into years. Locals started hearing Jonathan's lamentations at night. Whispers turned into stories of how he made a pact with the supernatural. He believed the mirror would act as a portal, a way to bring Lillian back or to join her wherever she was. Kyle interrupted. But what about our belongings? Elsie took a deep breath. Jonathan believed that every belonging has an essence of its owner. Maybe his spirit thinks that by collecting belongings, he can be reunited with his beloved. You aren't the first guest to have items taken. Over the years, many tenants have experienced it. The house has a way of remembering. As they left Elsie's house, the elderly lady's parting words sent a shiver down their spines. They say, on some nights, if you look closely into that mirror, you might see Lillian's silhouette, forever waiting for her beloved to join her. Ashley and Kyle bolted, not looking back. They had heard enough tales for one visit, but the story of Jonathan and Lillian would haunt them long after they had left the cursed confines of the Brenner Cottage. Elaine Roberts, a freelance journalist, had been scouring Airbnb for weeks, hunting for a unique staycation spot in the heart of the city. She needed a break, a change from her routine, and perhaps something intriguing to write about. Late one evening, as she was about to close her laptop in defeat, a new listing caught her eye. Nestled in the city's historic district, an apartment was described as a timeless retreat. What particularly struck her was the unbelievably low price for its prime location. Intrigued, she clicked on the listing to view more details. The photo showcased rooms that seemed to be trapped in another era. Vintage furnishings, art deco motifs, and dark wood paneling gave it an old world charm. But one peculiarity emerged. Every room prominently featured an ornate clock, and each was curiously set to 3.33 p.m. The captions provided no insight into this choice, only adding to its mystique. Though skeptical, Elaine felt drawn to the place and booked it impulsively. She imagined herself there, sipping tea by the window, watching the world go by, all while surrounded by the peculiar silent tickings of stationary clock hands. Upon her arrival, the reality was almost identical to her fantasies. Sunlight streamed through the tall windows, creating a serene ambience. The ever-present clocks, all pointing to 3.33 p.m., were a constant reminder of the apartment's quirkiness. Exploring the apartment, Elaine discovered a handwritten note on the kitchen counter. Written in elegant cursive, it read, Dear Elaine, welcome to our timeless retreat. As our esteemed guest, we have but one small request. We hope you'll honor our tradition. Please ensure you are present in the apartment daily at 3.33 p.m. It's a brief moment, a slice of the day, where we hope you'll sit, reflect, and perhaps even discover something new. It's more than a mere theme, it's a piece of this place's soul. With anticipation, your host. Elaine laughed off the note, attributing it to the owner's eccentric sense of hospitality. But as her first day in the apartment wore on, she couldn't shake off a growing sense of intrigue. What was the mystery behind the locked time? Was it merely a marketing tactic? Or was there an untold story waiting to unfold? Tossing the note on the table, Elaine decided to play along. After all, she was here for an experience, and she was beginning to sense that this Airbnb might offer more than she'd initially bargained for. On her second day, Elaine made her way through the nearby markets and cafes, taking in the city's hustle and bustle. The old world charm of the apartment and the surrounding area inspired her, and she made notes for potential articles. As 3.30 p.m. approached, Elaine's phone alarm, which she had set the previous night, began to chime. 
Remembering the peculiar request from her host, she hastened her steps, ensuring she'd be back in the apartment on time. She unlocked the door at 3.32 p.m. and took a seat waiting. But when the minute passed, nothing extraordinary occurred. The atmosphere remained the same, and the clocks as ever were stuck at 3.33 p.m. Elaine chuckled at her own gullibility. Perhaps it was just a fun way for the host to ensure guests spent more time in the apartment. However, as the days went by, Elaine noticed something odd. No matter where she was or what she was doing, at precisely 3.33 p.m., everything outside the apartment seemed to freeze for a split second. Birds hung motionless in the sky, people paused mid-step, and even the breeze seemed to halt. It was as if time itself held its breath. Alarmed, she began recording these moments on her phone. When she played them back, however, everything appeared normal. Was she hallucinating? Or was the apartment doing something to her perception? Over the next couple of days, Elaine couldn't shake off the eerie feeling that surrounded 3.33 p.m. She felt the weight of a thousand gazes, all converging upon her at that very minute each day, only to disperse as soon as the second passed. Trying to dismiss it as a mere figment of her imagination was becoming increasingly difficult. Out in the city, Elaine began asking locals about the building, subtly broaching the topic over coffee during market visits or while dining at quaint cafes. The locals would often exchange knowing glances before switching to another topic, further intensifying her suspicion that something was amiss. One evening, at a small bistro near her apartment, Elaine met Lila, an elderly woman with sharp, piercing eyes. Lila, a local historian and lifelong resident, seemed intrigued by Elaine's queries. Hesitating at first, Lila finally leaned in and began sharing tales from decades ago. That building, she whispered, was always the talk of the town. The prior residents, you see, often complained of feeling out of sync after living there. Some said it felt as though they were momentarily detached from the world at a specific time each day. They'd feel isolated, trapped in a bubble. Elaine showed Lila the video she had taken on her phone, capturing the split-second standstill she had observed. Lila's eyes widened as she watched. This, this is just like the tales from the old times. But we all thought they were just stories to spook kids. Elaine's thoughts raced back to the Airbnb reviews. Taking a chance, she messaged a few of the previous guests, sharing her experiences and inquiring about theirs. Replies began pouring in, each eerier than the last. A couple from Brazil shared how they felt a distinct chill every day at 3.33 p.m., despite the heating being on. A solo traveler from Japan mentioned feeling an inexplicable sadness, a weight on his chest during that minute. But it was a message from Martin, a recent guest, that truly caught her attention. He wrote, Did you notice the old radio in the living room? Try turning it on at that time. Just be prepared. Determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, Elaine decided that the following day she would do precisely that. Elaine waited impatiently the next day, watching the clock as it neared 3.33 p.m. She found the old radio, its wooden exterior faded, but still in surprisingly good condition given its age. She plugged it in, the low hum indicating it was alive. The minute hand finally struck 3.33. Heart pounding, Elaine turned on the radio. Instead of music or news, she was met with a cacophony of whispered voices, each trying to communicate something desperately. Among the jumble, a singular voice became clear. Don't. Trust. Upstairs. Elaine, frozen in fear, could only listen as the voices continued to speak, each recounting tales of sorrow, fear, and caution. As quickly as it began, the radio silenced when the clock struck 3.34, leaving Elaine in a horrified daze. Elaine recalled how the Airbnb listing had mentioned that the upper floor was off limits due to renovations. With the warning from the radio fresh in her mind, she approached the stairs leading upwards with trepidation. Every instinct screamed at her to leave the building, but her curiosity drove her forward. As she ascended, the atmosphere grew colder, oppressive. At the top, she found a hallway with several closed doors. Hesitantly, she opened the first. Inside, the room appeared frozen in time, dustless, pristine, with early 20th century furniture. An open journal on a desk caught her attention. It belonged to a woman named Amelia, a prior tenant. The entries described similar eerie experiences culminating in a final entry. I must find out. I hear them calling me, always at 333. Each room revealed similar tales, journals, and diaries left behind as if the occupants had vanished into thin air. The last room, however, was different. It was empty, save for a large mirror framed in ornate silver. 
Elaine hesitated before looking into it, but when she did, she didn't see her reflection. Instead, she saw the bustling life of the city outside. But something was off. The scene was from decades ago. The cars, the clothing of the pedestrians, the shop fronts, all belonged to another era. Determined to leave, Elaine turned away from the mirror, but the room's door slammed shut. Panic surged as she tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. The room grew colder, her breath visible in the air. The mirror's image began to change, showing a series of people, all looking directly at her, terror evident in their eyes. The last face she saw was Amelia's, her face contorted in a scream. Suddenly the door opened and Elaine rushed out, fleeing downstairs. The atmosphere lightened as she descended, the oppressive weight lifting. Grabbing her things, she left the Airbnb, swearing never to return. Elaine made it her mission to meet Lila again. She hoped the historian, with her intricate knowledge of the town's history, might shed light on the perplexing message from the radio. Elaine located the bistro from the other evening, spotting Lila in her usual corner, engrossed in a book. When Elaine approached, Lila's sharp eyes immediately sensed her distress. Before Elaine could speak, Lila motioned for her to sit. You turned on the radio, didn't you? Lila murmured, a hint of fear lacing her words. Elaine nodded, recounting the haunting whispers and the enigmatic warning. What does beware the next guest mean, Lila? Lila leaned in, her voice dropping to a whisper. There's a pattern, dear. After the radio message is heard, within days something happens to the listener. A few have vanished like Amelia, while others have suffered. Accidents. The building seems to have a mind of its own. Elaine's pulse quickened. Are you saying I'm in danger? Lila's face paled. Yes, leave the city immediately. Elaine heeded her advice, booking the earliest flight home. As she waited at the airport, her phone pinged with a message notification. Opening it, her blood ran cold. It was from the Airbnb host, reading, I'm so sorry. We never had an upstairs. Please tell me you didn't go in there. Her flight couldn't take off soon enough. In the shadows of the night, if our tales from unsettling horror stories gave you a fright, press like and let it be known. Subscribe, so you're never alone in this haunting journey and share, so others too can be wary. Until our next sinister tale, stay dark, dear listener.